Welcome back to Piston Ported's Secret Laboratory. For today's video, I guess we're gonna do, we're gonna announce a slight format change. Um, typically when I make a video, I try to do something that's pretty tech focused. And these will still be tech focused, but it'll almost be more like a diary. So we are actually going to call this segment the Shovelhead Diaries because there is a lot of really, really great videos about building shovelhead engines. Um, most of them are from this gentleman, Pacific Mike, on YouTube. If you have not watched his videos, they've been very helpful for me. Um, even though I typically don't watch videos on YouTube, I do watch his because they're just damn good. Um, and he's very, very knowledgeable and very talented. Um, regardless, so I don't know what I'm going to do with this information. If I'll create a website and have some stuff on there or if I'm just going to put it on YouTube and that'll be the diary and that's it. But um, I don't really know. I'm just going to use this as a way to document my project over the next, hopefully less than a year. So yeah. Anyway, um, what's on the agenda right now? I started taking apart my, if you saw my last video about the, uh, Transmission, uh, the ratchet top transmission. I am. I strip that back down so I can bring it up to uh, advanced cycle machining up in Superior, Wisconsin. And now I'm starting to strip my motor down so I can bring that with me and just take care of two birds with one stone, so to speak. Um, so I won't be doing any line boring or anything line or excuse me, line, uh, line lapping or anything like that for my, my engine. I'm, you know, there are, there's a machine shop, there are machine shops out there that are excellent that have much better tools than the line lapping tool. And I'm just going to have them, uh, set all my tolerances using accurate machining and hopefully I can build the best motor I can that way. Um, so I'll have them obviously do the heads and the, the engine block, um, you know, the crank, all that stuff. So, and then the pinion, you know, the, the, the gear case, if they, if you will, or the nose cone, uh, bushings and things like that. I'll have them set all that up so it, it is correct. And hopefully if I do that, then it will be a really smooth running motor anyway. Um, you know, this, so this first video is going to be pretty much me talking about, you know, the, the, uh, lifters and the push rods and the, and the, the gear case or, you know, nose cone, um, cam case. There's a lot of different ways to refer to it. And what I found when I, when I stripped those down and then, um, my next video, I don't know what that'll be for you, the top end or something. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Regardless, uh, this weekend or this coming week is the Davenport swap meet. So I'm going with my dad uh to the davenport swap meet he's leaving wednesday he's driving because he has to pick up some wood from his cousin who makes his own wood apparently for cabinet making and things like that and i am actually going to ride my road king down there and meet him so he's going wednesday and then i'm going to ride down on thursday and meet him and then we'll camp right there at the fairgrounds. If you've never been to the Davenport swap meet, it is the first time I've been around Harley people that I felt were like-minded individuals with me. Um, so people that are interested in old or antique motorcycles, 
that are, you know, and they have really, they know so much and they got a lot of really cool stuff and you can see it. If it exists, you're going to see it down there. If you, you know, want to see a Crocker, it's going to be down there. You want to see a uh, board track racers, you can buy them original, not, you know, some tribute or anything like that. They actually physically have them down there. And, and then there's the races on Friday where you can watch, you know, hand shift motorcycles racing flat track along with board trackers racing flat track uh, along with XR 750s um, all of it so it's it's you know it's an amazing experience I've been there a number of times um, I haven't been in a number of years but I am going this year because I need to try to find some original saddlebags for my bike uh, and I figure I could probably find thousands of them there. Um, while I'm there, I'm also going to keep an eye out for other things I may need, you know, because if it exists, it's going to be at Davenport. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. But, uh, without further of me, you know, further jabbering, I'm going to go ahead and get to, uh, what we got here. So the first thing I did was I took the push rods out, which is, you know, pretty straightforward, uh, you know, roll the, roll the motor over until the, the cams are, are not on the compression, you know, not, they're all the way to the lowest they go. So they're not actually on the compression, um, you know, and take the push rods out. Um, from there, you know, you have to take the lifter blocks out. So I, you know, I removed the lifter blocks and that allowed me to put an eyeball down into here, um, and look at my cam and then that created some curiosity. So then one thing led to another and I had the cam cover off and I was, uh, all in at that point. So. So you can see I got my my push rods all up here and they're in push rod tubes and they're all in the order that I removed them um, because I thought at the original at the you know originally I'm like oh I'll just be reusing those so I, I, I just want to take them out um, and keep track of them but the first thing that I noticed when I start when I lifted the covers off was that you can see right here all these chew marks Hopefully, there you go. You see all these chew marks where somebody put some pliers or something on there and really muff those up. That did not make me happy. And they're all like that. So that was really disappointing. Um, and then I rolled them, you know, I went and rolled them to check to see if they were straight and they're all straight, but this really bothered me. It really bothered me. I just can't. That's unnecessary. Anyway. Uh, and, you know, that was the beginning of what I might say has told me that this might be a higher mileage motor than, I, than anyone thought. I mean, the speedometer had been change so i really don't know what the mileage is on this bike so anyway all the push rods have this these you know these these witness marks where somebody had gone through and put pliers on them instead of doing it the correct way so that really sucked um you know whatever i mean push rods push rods are push rods i kind of figured like i would just use them as long as they weren't bent but that didn't really work out for me. So I'll be replacing those. Next thing was the lifters um, and the lifter blocks. And I pulled those. And the first thing that I noticed was that even with all the significant amount of oil, there was a lot of forward and back or up and down, if you will. They call it up and down. Cause they always say you should hold the, you know, hold this like this and move it in and out and you can't see it with my, with your hands or with your eyes right now, but I can feel it even with all that oil in there. I can feel that those bearings are starting to wear out. 
which whatever, you know, I can just, I could have just uh, put new wheels on it and call it a day and moved on. But uh, the real problem, if you look here, you can see, again, we're going to zoom in, you see that shiny witness marks where, you know, basically it starts seizing or rubbing, you know, galling inside the push rod or inside the uh, lifter block. So and I thought, okay, well, I'll just replace the ones that are like that. But you know what? They're all like that. Every single one of them was like that. So I can pull this one out. I can, you can see it right here, all the scratching. Um, try to get a better video of this. Yeah, there you go. You can see that it's just, it's just rocked. So, so that was uh, the first thing I saw. You know, the wheels, they got some shiny spots and dull spots from wear. You can see that. So that's not cool either. Um, the lifter, inside the lifters themselves, uh, you can, I'm not going to be able to get a good shot of that, but they have galling in there as well. Or inside the lifter blocks, there's galling inside those as well. So at that point, it's like, you know, do you replace them? You know, do you put new blocks on it? And then put new lifters and then and then everything sized correctly. Or do you buy new lifters oversized and use the original lifter blocks? And after a little bit of careful consideration and thought, I decided I wanted to reuse the original lifter blocks because they have a look to them that is extremely primitive. Uh, really primitive so you can see all the the casting and everything like that they got the part numbers on them they're just super primitive looking and i like i really liked this countersunk and counterboard recess here for locating them i didn't want to lose that uh, all the aftermarket ones are just counterboard they're not counter sunk so to speak from what i could see and they don't look like this. This looks original. Um, so as primitive as this is, I'm gonna roll with it. So I'll clean these up, buy some oversized lifters, uh, bring them up to advanced cycle machining and get these babies bored out to the correct tolerance. And uh, you know, then I'll paint them all nice and and I'll have these, uh, you know, original lifter blocks on my bike, as primitive as they are. You know, they are, it, it will look correct. And, you know, if that's important to you or not. If, you know, if you want just a, a big shiny whatever, you can buy these in Chrome for like 150 bucks, you know, for like drag specialties brands, and they kind of go up from there. Um, but again, it won't look the same. So, so yeah, so that was super disappointing because, you know, lifters and lifter blocks are expensive. Uh, push rods aren't that expensive, but, you know, I had no sweat just being like, yeah, I'm going to put some push rods in it, whatever. Not a big deal. But now I'm going to be doing push rods, lifter block, or get the lifter box, you know, remachined, new lifters, tappets, if you will. And that's going to cost me a pretty good chunk of money. Um, and then from there, so that was disappointing, but whatever, you know, we'll set this stuff aside. And then the next thing we got here, we got our cam, which is fine, I guess. Um, it's an original cam. This motor had, shows no signs of anybody ever being in it. So that was uh, pretty promising you know, in that regard, um, for good or bad, but it's the original H cam. That's the, uh, FLH, you know, so it's marked there with an H. So, you know, that, you know, that's the original cam. Um, you can see the, the, the marks and the chatter 
from the rollers on the on the lifters so that's not cool and at that point it's like whatever i got rust i got chatter um i got you know different i got surface failing so this baby's going in the trash so we're gonna have to get another one of these also disappointing but so you know could be a pretty high mileage motor might not be you know whatever I don't really know um this is the breather gear actually it was fine you know I don't really see anything that jumped out at me on this it's a breather gear teeth look okay doesn't look like it ate anything no real chips or anything like that um the, you know, there are some witness marks from the teeth but that's to be expected uh and as we proceed down the path here, we're going to look at the actual nose cone. And I originally was like, well, I might put a new, a new uh, cam cover, cone cover on here anyway, because somebody had tried to uh, beat it up with a screwdriver or something here, trying to get the timing cover off. And this is an end oiler. So they plug these ends after they machine it, and they did a pretty sloppy job but you know it's original so i was like whatever you know maybe i'll just i'll just polish it up and use it and you can see all this slop from the weld that they didn't clean off after they welded it you know pretty janky but regardless that wasn't the problem the problem that i found was this and the first thing we're going to talk about is this little tiny let's see here's the bushing for your pinion gear right here this is your cam bushing here and this we're gonna get this out like that i found this little tiny piece right here and i don't know if you can see this there you go I found that in my oil pump and I could not for the life of me figure out what that was. So I, after I was analyzing all this stuff, after I took it apart, it occurred to me that this bushing, well, that occurred to me right away that this is a press fit. This should be pressed into here, right? And, it, and so it gets pressed into there and then that's how it works and then the pinion shaft turns and this stays in place and that's fine you know i just thought oh it's a press fit and that's how it's going to be but then i found this and i could not for the life of life of me figure out where it came from and as i was looking at this it occurred to me what it was it was actually the pin there's a pin it was pinned the bushing was pinned right here to the case to theoretically keep it from turning. Now, I don't know what happened. All I know is that this is supposed to be a tight fit, okay? I shouldn't be able to just drop it in there. It shouldn't have come off on the pinion shaft when I pulled the, the cover off, but it did. You can see how sloppy it is in here. So this thing has been spinning in here for, you know, whoever knows how many miles. I had this bike running. I didn't ride it, but I did start it uh, just to prove that the motor ran. And it ran, but this would greatly affect your oil pressure because this is, a, this is an end oiler, and it's supposed to sit like this, pressed into here, and, you know, the oil comes in, and it, you know, it, it goes into the whatever the channel and it pumps in by you know supposed to pump in behind it and you know that's why they call it an end oiler it's not supposed to just sit here and spin around and have all this slop for the oil to come out so you're actually lo i'm losing a ton of oil pressure right there 
And then, you know, these don't already have a lot of oil pressure. It's a volume thing. I already always make sure they remind you that it's volume, not pressure. But regardless, this is going to drastically affect oil pressure. So this right here, or oil flow, or whatever you want to call it, volume, um, this one thing right here could be why these are so muffed up. 100%. I, it, it could be that for sure. I did not find any sign that the this piece of metal got eaten by a gear anywhere. I found nothing that that you know led pointed to that. And I don't know, you know, it's a chicken and egg scenario. Like did somebody run this thing low on oil and then this you know seized onto the end of the pinion shaft and then spun the and then it spun the bushing? I don't know. Maybe it was just loose in the first place and it expanded and then this just fell out and then this just started spinning. I don't know. I just don't know. What I do know is that because of the amount of material inside the bore here that was removed from this thing spinning, I can't put a new one of these in here and have it fit right. It's, it's you know... It's just going to be too loose. So it'll just happen again and again and again. So I guess I'm putting a new one of these on there. But so I thought that was pretty interesting, if disappointing. Um, interesting in the fact that I figured it out. Disappointing in the fact that it happened in the first place. So anyway, um... Pinion shaft looks okay. Um, I'll have it checked when I bring the crank up and the case is up and everything. But uh, yeah, this babe is toast. So, all right. Well, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll uh, follow this up with some... Uh, videos of the top end as I as I take it apart.